hi everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning back in i feel like the weeks are just flying by and it is shabbat yet again and time to get back in the kitchen and get cooking today's video is also going to be in collaboration with sarah malka her youtube channel is from it up she's amazing and great and has such amazing content please go and check her out i'm going to have her channel linked down below and if you're here from from it up i'm so thankful that you are here checking me out i hope you enjoy this video and consider subscribing now let's get into cooking hi guys welcome back to sonia's prep in this week's video i wanted to share with you what i made for shabbat i'm going to be dividing the video and what i made on thursday and what i made on friday because Let's face it, with all the kids home, it's virtually impossible for me at least to make everything in one shot in one day. So if you'd like to see what I made and all the yummy goodies, then please keep watching. On Thursday nights is when I do most of my marinations and little preps that I can just marinate everything and put it into the fridge. So today on Thursday night, I'm going to be doing my salmon teriyaki and my sam salmon with mayo and garlic dill dressing. It's very simple to make. All I do is take two tablespoons of mayo, some dill, crushed garlic, salt and pepper, mix that all up and slather that onto the salmon. Now I'm going to be moving right along to my salmon teriyaki with sweet chili sauce. I just placed some salt and pepper, sweet chili sauce, and teriyaki marinade on the salmon. Give that all a good rub and that's it. I'm ready for my salmon to go in the fridge to marinate and I'll take it out on Friday morning and bake it in the oven. I'm also going to be prepping ahead of time my garlic mayo salad dressing. It's just mayo, salt and pepper, garlic, dill, some lemon and water that I give a good mix and I'm going to just make a big batch of it. I just learned this the hard way that if I make my own dressings, I need to make big batches of it and store it in the fridge so it could last me two to three times and I don't have to constantly be remaking it. So it was a helpful tip that I found from another friend of mine on Facebook. So I'm really helpful for that tip and I wanted to share that with you as well. For Shabbat this week, I also am going to be making some stuffed cabbage and I wanted to do the filling on a Thursday night while the kids are sleeping and I'm not in the middle of taking care of them so that all I have to do on a Friday is just take the filling out and it's going to be easy to just wrap up all the cabbage leaves and have it be ready. I'm going to have the full recipe of the filling down below so don't worry. I have my very handy dandy food processor where I'm going to be processing one apple, one onion, some tomato, and two garlic cloves. That's all going to be food processed and I'm going to add to that some meat. It's going to be about a handful of chopped meat as well as half a bunch of cilantro and half a can of tomato sauce. The reason why I add an apple into the filling is because when the apple cooks it becomes soft and allows the filling to become nice and soft and it's not hard and tough when you're cutting through the filling.
To season the filling, I'm going to be adding in one tablespoon of chicken consomme as well as one tablespoon of salt, some pepper, some cumin, and coriander. In a pot where I will be cooking the stuffed cabbage, I'm going to be placing in about two tablespoons of vegetable oil, some bones, and the inner core of the cabbage leaves that are impossible for me to be able to stuff. So I'm just going to be breaking that up and placing that in the pot, as well as the remainder of the tomato sauce. Fill the tomato sauce can with water and place that in the pot as well. Now it's Friday morning and I'm going to be steaming my cabbage leaves. The way that I learned to steam it is just to put it into a big bowl, fill it up with boiling water and cover it with a big plate. This prevents it from becoming overdone. And while we're waiting for that to get nice and soft, I'm going to be soaking in my mixed beans for my chalent that, will, that we will be eating on Saturday for lunch. Now the cabbage leaves are nice and soft so I'm going to drain all that water out and I'm going to be cutting the cabbage leaves in half and removing that middle core in the middle. This is the technique that I use to fill my cabbage leaves and fold them over. I'm going to be zooming in so you can get a closer look. Now I'm going to be placing all the wrapped cabbage leaves into that pot where we will be cooking and I'm going to fill that up with water, place that on the stove to boil and add in a little bit more of tomato sauce. I like my stuffed cabbage leaves uh, to be saucy and not, not like white and clear. Some people make them with no sauce at all but I like mine saucy but you just do what your taste preference tells you. Now I'm going to be moving right along to frying my flounder. I have one egg that I put in some paprika, salt and pepper, and garlic powder. So I'm going to be dipping in the flounder in the egg mixture first and then into the panko crumbs. Frying it up and placing it into a pan that has been lined with some paper towels to drain the oil. Next, I'm going to be marinating my veal breast. You could marinate it any way you normally like to have your meat taste, but I'm going to be putting in some salt, pepper, garlic powder, cumin, coriander, and Montreal steak seasoning, and then adding in some oil and rubbing that all in very well into the meat. I should have done this on a Thursday night, but my meat was completely frozen, and I just decided to do it on Friday morning, and place it into the fridge to marinate for a few hours. Then I'm going to be putting some sweet potatoes, regular potatoes and garlic that I have pre-washed already and cleaned into the same pot as well. Both salmons are now ready to go into the oven. I'm just going to be adding in some sesame teriyaki on the salmon and I'm going to be taking about two to three tablespoons of oil, heating it up and adding in one whole head of garlic. I'm going to be sauteing the garlic until they get a nice brown color and putting that all around the salmon. I'm going to be baking these salmons covered at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. 
Here is the cabbage that has come to a boil and now, like I said earlier, I'm just placing in a little bit more tomato sauce on the top to make it have that delicious sauce that I like. So now we're going to be making some deli roll. I'll show you the packages that I use in case you're interested. So I use this brand of puff pastry dough and it says 15 ounces on it. And then I use a um, smoked turkey breast, this kind, and another kind. So I just take two different varieties and I mix them. And to put onto the um, puff pastry dough, I'm just going to be using ketchup, mayo, and mustard. And that's it. Let's get started. So for the deli roll, I take the puff pastry dough and I roll it out just a little bit so it can get a little bit thinner on every single end. And then on top of that puff pastry, I add in the mayo, the mustard, and the ketchup. I put it only in the middle and then I place on top of that the two different turkeys that I alternate. To close the deli roll, I just simply braid it and egg wash it, put some sesame seeds on top and bake it at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. For the challenge, I take a slow cooker, put in some meat. You could make this any which way. You could make it vegan with no meat at all. You can just add chicken if you'd like. But here I have some lamb that I'm going to be placing in there as well as washing and draining one cup of barley and the beans that we have previously soaked. I'm going to be just rinsing that off and placing it into the slow cooker as well. I'm also going to be adding in some tomato sauce that I have not used previously that I just froze. So I just place them into some Ziploc bags and freeze it and take it out whenever I need it. So into the crock pot, I'm going to be adding in one or two tablespoons of oil, some potatoes that I have cubed, a tomato that I have cubed as well, and some garlic that I have sliced thinly. I used about five to six garlic cloves that I have sliced thinly. To that, I'm going to be seasoning it with some salt and pepper, garlic powder, a tablespoon of chicken consomme, one tablespoon of ketchup, and one tablespoon of honey as well. You could also add in some barbecue and paprika. It's all to your taste and preference and liking. For those of you who may not know what chalent is, it is basically a bean stew that is cooked overnight in a crock pot on low and people usually enjoy it on Saturday for lunch. Now it's time to make some salads. I'm going to be starting off with my roasted zucchini salad. I take the zucchinis and cut them into threes and cut them into matchsticks that I'm going to be seasoning with some salt and pepper and oil, placing them on a baking tray lined with parchment paper and roasting them until they have a nice golden color.
While the zucchinis are cooking, I'm going to be making my homemade Caesar salad dressing. I take a container, fill it up with some mayo, salt and pepper, a tablespoon of mustard, a tablespoon of onion soup mix, and some garlic powder. I give that a very good mix and add in about three to four cloves of garlic and mix that as well. Now the zucchinis have browned on one side perfectly, I'm just going to be flipping them over to brown on the other side. While that's going on, my son and I are going to be doing some salad preps. He's cutting up some lettuce and guys, this is such a good way to bond with your kids. He just wanted to help out so I gave him a cutting board, a knife and some lettuce to cut it up for the Caesar salad. And we just schmoozed and we had a good time. So I do highly recommend it. Get your kids involved and get bonding. So to the roasted zucchini salad, I'm just going to thinly slice up a red and a yellow and an orange pepper. You could do whatever vegetables you really like in this dish. I'm just doing the peppers, some cilantro, a few garlics that I'll be squeezing in, a little bit of purple onion that I'll be chopping thinly inside. Seasoning, I'm going to be adding in some salt and pepper and some vinegar as well as avocado oil to the salad, giving it a good mix and then it's all done. Now the little ones wanted to get into the action as well and they wanted to help out so I gave them a very not sharp knife and a cutting board and they attempted to cut up the lettuce as well. It was very sweet and cute. They just want to help out. They just want to be involved and even though it may slow up the process of you getting things done, at least they're doing something and they're next to you and you're keeping an eye on them. So for the Caesar salad, I chop up a head of lettuce and cut up one cucumber and some red onion and I'm going to be placing some homemade croutons that I made with my chalas that I have left over usually and I'm going to be dressing that salad up at the very last minute so it doesn't get soggy. Next up is this very easy purple cabbage salad, which is my daughter's favorite. I just simply shred up the purple cabbage using my mandolin slicer, put some salt and pepper on it and give it a good mix with some mayo. Whenever I serve my hummus, I just take regular store-bought hummus, put it into a nice beautiful plate, add in some oil, some paprika, and some garbanzo beans. It just elevates it and makes it look like you spent a lot of time on it. And I always love to dress up everything with some greens. 
Here's what the stuffed cabbage looks like when it's all nice and done. I love how it looks. I also made some stuffed cucumbers for us to eat on Saturday night. I'll have a link to that video down below if you are interested in how I made it. And again, don't forget to check out From It Up. She has her own Shabbat meal prep video that she released today. And she is just amazing. Head on over there, check her out, and let her know that I sent you. That's it for this week's Shabbat meal prep. I hope you guys got some inspiration and motivation. I hope you guys liked everything that you saw. If you did, please consider subscribing and give me a big thumbs up. Until next time, bye!